Good evening, gardeners. It's Friday, December 18th, and it is a freezing cold night here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And tonight we are going to have a hard freeze. The temperature is supposed to get down to at least 28 degrees Fahrenheit, possibly lower. And I wanted to take this as an opportunity to show you how I protect my tropical, less cold hardy fruit trees with these plant jackets. And on previous videos, I showed you how to install these plant jackets, which I will link to above, and how they are used to protect these marginal fruit trees in my climate. However, I wanted to take this as an opportunity to show you in detail how they perform and teach you how to properly use these because they are frequently used improperly. So right in front of me, I have three different plants and all three are very cold sensitive. All the way over to the right, I have a small Meyer lemon tree. I planted this in early spring. Meyer lemons are hardy to approximately 20 degrees Fahrenheit when they are mature. In the center, I have my wonderful Lila avocado. Lila avocados have shown to be hardy to approximately 15 degrees Fahrenheit on a completely mature tree. And all the way over to the left is my Owari Satsuma. Owari Satsumas have shown to be hardy to about 12 degrees Fahrenheit when fully mature. Now it's very important to realize that when you see hardy to 12 degrees or so, that only means when the tree is completely mature and for very, very brief time periods and that temperature must rebound very quickly at sunrise. You also have to understand that those minimum temperatures, that means that the tree is severely damaged and probably killed all the way back to the trunk. However, the tree survived. The reality is that these trees are not nearly as hardy as their minimum ratings and they will probably begin taking damage to some degree in the 20 to 25 degree Fahrenheit range. Now I live in zone 8A so we have average annual minimums of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit and an annual minimum will severely damage all three of these trees. So I instinctively protect them when I see temperatures are going to be 28 degrees Fahrenheit or lower because they could take some damage at those temperatures. So for me and my climate, that means I'll probably have to do that about a dozen days a year. And the way I do this is by taking bricks and stacking them around the trunks to prevent any kind of wind desiccation. And then I weave in incandescent Christmas light bulbs to create a heat source. And then I cover them in these wonderful plant jackets, which have drawstrings on the bottom. And the drawstrings allow me to draw the plant jackets closed around the bottom and hold in the heat from incandescent light bulbs. These plant jackets are about $10 to $15 for the smaller ones and about $20 to $25 for the larger ones. So they're pretty affordable and they're very easy to install and uh, you should get a few seasons out of them. However, I've been buying these for years and I noticed that they get a lot of bad reviews and all of the negative reviews are pretty much the same. They are from users that cover their plants in these jackets, they get a freeze and then the plant jackets do nothing to protect the tree and they die underneath. And it's important to know why that happens. Now, if all you're going to do is cover your sensitive plants, that will only protect them against a frost. So if you have temperatures that are right at or slightly above freezing, you could get a radiative frost where you will get some icing on the leaves. And plant jackets will protect against icing on the leaves because they will prevent the ice from forming on the leaves in a radiative frost. However, they will not do anything if you get to freezing or lower because the jackets are just going to freeze through. The reason why jackets are effective on human beings is because human beings are warm blooded and our bodies create a heat source. So jackets hold in our internal body heat, but plants have no internal heat source. So if all you do is throw a jacket over them, you're not holding in any kind of heat because trees don't generate heat. So you have to add a heat source underneath the jacket in order for the jacket to hold in that heat. So you must use an incandescent light source or some other type of heat source. So once you use these plant jackets and you wrap them around the heat source, it will hold in the heat. So I wanna take this time and I wanna show you exactly how effective they are. 
So in my garden right here, I have an Ambient Weather WS2000 weather station, and I have it installed above my garden where the backyard starts to slope down because it is the most wide open cold spot in my entire garden, and I want my absolute worst minimum reading here. So I'm going to use that weather station as my control temperature because it's the coldest part of my yard. And then right next to it to the left, you can clearly see my hinged hoop house, which has uh, several strings of lights inside generating heat, keeping it warm. And inside that hinged hoop house is an additional wireless thermometer that is plugged into my weather station to get a reading inside there. And inside the plant jacket of my avocado tree, I have another wireless thermometer that is hanging off the tree. So using that wireless thermometer, I am able to tell exactly what the temperature is inside the middle plant jacket. And using that, I should be able to pretty accurately gauge uh, roughly the temperatures in the left and the right plant jacket as well. So using the ambient weather app on my phone, I'm able to see that my weather station is sitting at 38.3 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is my main temperature sensor that is in the center of my garden. So that's what the temperature of my yard is right now. If I scroll down, I am able to go to my uh, sensor in the avocado tree and that is at 42.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So that means that I'm getting roughly about four degrees of uh, additional warmth underneath that plant jacket right now. And that is only using one and a half strands of Christmas lights. I have a 40 watt strand and a 20 watt strand on there. Uh, so it's only 60 watts of heat under there. That is really nothing. And because I expect January to get colder, I'm going to add an additional strand of lights to keep them warm. Uh, there are three complete strands on the Owari Satsuma, so that has 120 watts of, uh, of heat. So I would expect it to be much warmer under there. With the Owari Satsuma, I probably wouldn't cover it unless I saw a low of 25 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, but the problem is it's loaded up with fruit, and citrus fruit tends to get destroyed with temperatures of 28 degrees Fahrenheit or lower, so the fruit is not very hardy. If the tree had no fruit on it, I wouldn't worry about it on a night like tonight, but I don't want all of my beautiful mandarins to get destroyed. Then if I scroll down to my greenhouse, you can see it's 47.7 degrees in there. So I have almost 10 full degrees of protection inside of uh, my greenhouse relative to the rest of the yard. So overnight, my weather station is going to track the temperatures. It's going to get very cold here tonight. And what I will do is I will check back in the morning and I will graph the temperature sensor that is underneath the avocado tree. And I will uh, graph that relative to the sensor that is sitting out in the middle of my uh, garden and also the sensor that is inside my greenhouse. And we can see exactly how good of protection we are getting inside the plant jacket and the greenhouse using those metrics. It's the very next day on Saturday, December 19th. And here I isolated all of the statistics from my three thermometers on my ambient weather webpage. And here you can see the outdoor temperature of my weather station. You can see at 4.01 a.m. I hit a low of 28.4 degrees in the coldest spot of my garden. If we move over here, we can see how the plant jacket performed with the avocado. And at 4.17 a.m. I hit my lowest temperature inside the plant jacket of 33.8 degrees. So this plant jacket gave me almost five and a half degrees of protection. Despite having a hard freeze in the yard, I never fell below freezing inside the plant jacket. Now you can compare that to my greenhouse over here, which saw its coldest temperature at 7.02 a.m. I hit 39.4 degrees inside of my greenhouse. So I got a full 11 degrees of protection inside the greenhouse versus my coldest outdoor temperature in the yard. One of the great things about the ambient weather setup is it records data every single five minutes for all of your attached wireless sensors. And then you can export that data into a CSV file and then open it in Microsoft Excel and you can make charts and tables out of it. So that is precisely what I did here. I charted all of my data and I began last night at 5 p.m. and I cut the data off today at 10 o'clock a.m. So you could see what happened basically from sunset yesterday to sunrise today and a little bit beforehand. 
And this blue line right here represents the performance of my weather station out in the middle of the yard, completely unprotected. And 32 degrees Fahrenheit is freezing, so everything roughly below my mouse right here uh, was a freeze. And down here is the deepest part of the hard freeze. Now the red line right here is inside the avocado plant jacket. So you can clearly see that I saw at least a 5 degree temperature benefit using the incandescent Christmas lights to keep the avocado tree warm in the plant jacket. And remember, I'm only using a 100 strand and a 50 strand uh, light set, so that's only a total of 60 watts. Now after witnessing this performance, I could easily up the performance a lot by adding another light strand, and that's probably what I will do because I expect January temperatures to be quite a bit colder and I expect to see lower minimums in my yard, and I want to offer it more protection, so I will probably put another $3 100 strand of incandescent light bulbs for more protection. Now right above that, this green line right here is my greenhouse, and you can see I consistently got a 10 plus degree temperature increase uh, throughout the night, and um, that temperature increase seemed to have gotten better as it got colder and colder, probably because the greenhouse was much slower to leak uh, warmth. And then you can see right here is about where sunrise happened, and then the temperatures instantly skyrocketed. And at that point, I needed to go out and vent the greenhouse because it was starting to get far too hot in there. But this clearly shows you the amazing performance of the plant jacket and the greenhouse when used properly. You can see that in the middle of the yard, my temperatures were all over the place, probably because I got little tiny light wind gusts that were circulating the air, so I was seeing big temperature differentials. You can see inside the plant jackets and inside the greenhouse, things were much more stable. The temperatures were much more consistent because of that insulating effect. So overall, I find the plant jacket to be extremely successful, really easy to use, very affordable. And again, I'm going to add one more strand of lights to it to add a little bit more warmth, and they really work fantastic. So while last night was a really cold night, it's actually turned out to be a really beautiful day, and we don't have any hard freezes over the next seven days forecast, so I took all of the plant jackets off, and I'm going to take you to each of the trees and show you how they all weathered the hard freeze. Dale's just soaking up the sun because the sun's nice and warm today, but here is the Meyer lemon, and you can clearly see there has been little to no damage on the Meyer lemon. Uh, there is uh, a little bit of a tip that did get fried, but that did not happen in this freeze. That happened in a colder 25 degree freeze about a week or two ago. But as we can expect, um, the tree did not see any kind of freezing temperatures because it was protected. So everything looks great, and despite being such a young tree, it is weathering the weather here fantastic. And then over here, we have my Lila Avocado. And as, uh, as expected, there is no freeze damage on this tree at all. It's weathered a very cold, very below average December, uh, just fantastically. And there you can see what the incandescent strand lights look like. It's just a regular old $3 uh, box of incandescent Christmas lights, nothing special. And overall, the tree looks fantastic. It's gone through several hard freezes so far in December. And uh, I expect it to sail through January just as successfully with this protection method. And last but not least is the pride and joy of my garden, the Awari Satsuma. This tree is just absolutely gorgeous. 28 degrees Fahrenheit is no, uh, is, is no struggle at all for a tree as hardy as this. It's only the fruit that can be damaged with such temperatures. And because we protected it with plenty of incandescent Christmas lights, it was more than warm enough in there to protect the fruit. And it just looks great. So there you have it, everybody. This is a really easy and cheap way to protect sensitive fruit trees, and this is how I'm able to grow things like citrus and avocados that are not really hardy to my Zone 8 climate, but they survive, and not only survive, but thrive and sail through my winters with flying colors. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully the data really showed you what kind of performance you can get out of these simple measures. And like I've said numerous times over this video, simply adding a few more very cheap light strands can dramatically increase the amount of protection you can give them. 
So I will be doing that in January to offer another five to 10 degrees of protection just in case we get a crazy annual minimum in the teens. I want to make sure that they are all well protected. So everyone, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products I mentioned in this video or that I use in my garden in general, everything I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. If you could begin your shopping with one of our links, we get a little bit of credit for that, even if you don't buy anything in the storefront, so it helps us every time you do that. Thank you all again so much for watching, and I hope to see all of you again on the next video.